Welcome back. This is the 14th episode of my multi-cloud network architecture series. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about advanced service insertion in the cloud. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you've seen how AVHS can enable the easy and automated insertion of next generation firewalls into the path of your traffic, whether it's east, west, north, south, internet egress, doesn't matter. The aviation controller has a mechanism that's automated to insert these firewalls gracefully into the network. But I wanted to take this a step further because I know the aviation controller is a lot more agile than just inserting next generation firewalls. We really can insert anything. And today I've invited special guest, Phil Davis. He's a senior systems engineer at Aviatrix. And Phil and I go back years. We used to work together at Viptela and Cisco, and he's a really smart guy. And he came up with some awesome examples of advanced service insertion in the cloud. And I can't wait for him to show it to us. Thank you so much, Phil, for being here today. Hey, Dana, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this is really exciting. What I've been working on is something specific for one of my customers where they were looking to add their F5 requirement that they have on their in their on-prem data centers into the cloud. So what they're looking for and the feature they get from the F5, which is really cool, is that it's an actual SSL orchestrator. So it takes the uh, SSL packet that's coming through going to their servers uh, and decrypts that information and then gives them the ability to apply service chains and see you know, what's going on inside the packet into a firewall. And in their case, they actually also use an IPS. Mm. So that traffic gets decrypted pass through their firewall in the IPS, and then goes back on its way to their servers. And it really gives them the visibility to see what's going on. And this is something that I'm seeing more and more with my customers, where with more and more of the internet traffic, I mean, what are we up to like play 99 point some percent of all traffic on the internet is encrypted at this point. Right. So what visibility do you really have in your firewall and in your IPS? Well, this solution gives them that. The right. challenge became when they went into the cloud, when they had to look at this and say, okay, how will I put this solution like I'm doing on-prem in the cloud, give me the ability to uh, look at the traffic when I need to do it the way I'm doing it today, but also have the ability to scale this out. Got it. So I need to insert traffic so that it gets you know redirected to the F5 on an as-needed basis. I need to scale this out so that as my environment grows, I can actually add more and more of these. Uh, I want to do an active-active if possible, right, which is always difficult in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then also they had to maintain visibility. That was a huge part for them is they wanted to know that when that traffic was going from, say, this DMZ VPC on this side over into their production workloads or, or excuse me, their production servers, mm -hmm. they wanted to make sure that they could see that traffic and see who the source was. Yeah. So all of that kind of added together into the requirement that this customer had. Wow, really interesting set of requirements. And I can see how they might have been used to doing something on-prem for so many years and trying to find how that maps to the cloud deployment model isn't as straightforward as you'd think. However, I'm gonna tell you right now, the beauty of having the Aviatrix platform is that we have these architectures already preset and we can reuse components of the architecture to meet these requirements. And in this case, it looks like we're reusing our transit FireNet component of the multi-cloud network architecture. Is that right? That's exactly right. And, and, and everything you said there was, was spot on, right? So what I did is I looked at this and said, all right, I, I understand your requirements. And they were coming back with difficulty trying to figure out how to fit this into the cloud, how mm -hmm. to get the requirements such as keeping visibility, mm -hmm. uh, scaling out with active-active, redirecting traffic, all those pieces were, were difficult without the Aviatrix solution. In my conversations with them and looking at this, I thought, well, this fits really well into our transit fire net. But typically, if you, as, you know, everyone is familiar with transit fire net, it would just be a firewall directly after our gateways. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I was able to put the F5 in and place the firewall. And then we just hang on behind that, the firewall, IPS, whatever service chain devices they need. Mm -hmm. And we're still able to maintain the session, so we send the traffic to the correct F5. Mm -hmm. We take care of the uh, removal of address translation because we don't need to run snats to know which one to go back to because we take care of those pieces. So this was a perfect fit for our transit fire net. Got it, and so it's the controller that handles the automation and the insertion of the firewalls and, and the traffic redirection to the F5s and to the firewalls. However, it's the gateways that are handling 
the session state, the hashing, the load balancing, things like that, right? So there's intelligence in both our controller and in our gateways that are helping us meet these requirements, right? Exactly. The gateway is instrumental in, you know, like you said, hashing, load, bearing, load balancing that traffic and also keeping track of whether or not uh, the F5 is up. Phil, can we dive a little bit deeper? I want to get into a little bit of the weeds here to see how the traffic flow and how it's all configured. Definitely. Yeah, I'll be happy to do that with you, Dana. So when we look at this deployment that I have laid out here, you can see, you know, a, a simulation of their environment. You know, some of the some of the VPCs they have, they actually have more than this, but we we can see that we have an on-prem location here. We have multiple VPCs. We've got internet egress. We have a shared services or or a DMZ uh, is what they'll what they'll refer to this as because they'll actually have traffic come in hit a server in this DMZ, and then that server will make an additional call back up into other VPCs. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, we have our transit VPC connected to our transit VNet, where we have some workloads in, in Azure as well. So you can see we have a nice view here of where anything can talk to anything using the Aviatrix architecture. Mm -hmm. But on top of this, the other piece we've added is this layer with the transit FireNet and the F5 is behind it. it. So now as traffic would come in from the data center, maybe this data center traffic would be able to flow right to, to this application layer without any uh, need for inspection, but then traffic coming in maybe from the internet or traffic from the data center that might wanna go to the prod or the dev, mm -hmm. we can actually through the Aviatrix solution say that we want to inspect any of that traffic. So traffic, traffic going to the dev VPC, for example, would, based on the setting from the APX controller, redirect traffic as it need to to uh, hit this workflow. Okay, so if I go into this other tab here, I'll have a little bit more detail on what I'm going to show you and I have built in the lab today. So what I have since I'm, you know, working out of my house, I have this laptop connection, which I'm on right now. And actually this laptop, this session that I'm using right now is actually going through this setup. Mm -hmm. So I am coming into one of our VPN gateway. I'm leaving this gateway going down here to our transit, and then continuing on my way out to the internet. So what you're gonna see as I go through here is that my traffic is going to go through, hit this transit on my way out, and then we're going to redirect from that transit gateway into the F5 where that traffic will be decrypted, and then I'll get sent to the firewall. Mm -hmm. So as part of this test, I'll be able to actually show you what the firewall can see and that that traffic is unencrypted. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing that's gonna happen is the traffic is going to be sent back from the firewall to the F5. The F5 will then uh, encrypt the traffic on its way out, and for my lab and my setup, I'm actually going to the open internet. Yeah. just because that was an easier way to set up for, for my demo purposes. What you'll see here when we get all said and done is that the traffic will be encrypted back to my laptop all the way to the server. But what we have is the F5 in the middle unencrypting that traffic, sending it through its service chain, which in my lab is a firewall. Mm -hmm. I have to be using a Palo Alto firewall in my lab. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, but any firewall would work. And then that traffic comes back into the F5 and continues on its way. Got it. So in this case, Phil, you're leveraging your laptop as the source of the traffic or the source of the request, and you're coming in through our user VPN solution into a VPC. However, this traffic could be originating from on-prem in a data center, at a branch site, in another VPC, in another cloud. It could be in, it could be in Azure or GCP or OCI, right? It doesn't really matter where the source is coming from. As long as you're using Aviatrix, it builds that connectivity for you, right? Exactly, exactly, Dana. So that's, you know, I put myself in the dev because my original idea was I'm going to show I'm coming from the dev VPC going to the prod VPC and, you know, showing this encryption and decryption. And then I realized going to a public server on the open internet is, to me is actually a much neater demo. So regardless of my destination, mm -hmm. I'm going to be monitoring this dev VPC and that traffic. And then I'll be able to show you later in a demo mm -hmm. that I can choose to inspect or not inspect that traffic. And I'm either going directly out or I'm actually going through the uh, F5. This is pretty amazing because, you know, if you think about it with the AVHS controller, you're now able to insert pretty much any service into that transit VPC environment. So you could, like right now it's an F5, right? If I want to put, I don't know, a Silver Peak WAN optimization box or some content delivery solution, whatever it is, it, it, it can be fitted into this architecture using our controller and then you can even service chain because you can have that F5, 
They can have a firewall. It can go from the firewall back to the F5 and then back to the, the rest of the network through our gateway. That That's just mind blowing that we can orchestrate all of this and control it and have the intelligence to configure all of this for you. Exactly. And that's, that's the beauty of this architecture. And that's one of the things that the customer was real happy with, with our solution. And we were able to do exactly what you described, where we sent that to the F5. They actually sent it to a firewall yep. and then an IPS IDS. And if they had another device, they could do that as well. Yeah. And it would just keep going through that service chain and then be sent back into uh, the network through our gateway again. And to your point, it's really about the architecture of the aviatrix solution that allows this to work so easily. Right, right. I can't imagine doing this by hand. This is not an easy thing to statically configure like you usually would have to without a controller-based solution from aviatrix. You'd have to manually, statically configure everything and, and monitor all manually or use some ridiculous Lambda scripts to handle things. Like, whereas you have this controller that's got the intelligence built in, it's scaling it out for you. It's monitoring the sessions. It's making sure that things are up and there's gonna be no black holing of traffic and that you're not gonna cause looping in the network, things like that. I love this. This is, this is what really makes me excited about the Aviatrix platform. And then in the egress pod downstream there on the southbound, that could also be another firewall network, right? It doesn't have to be one of our gateways to go to the internet. You could put a firewall in there too, right? Right. Exactly. And then when you layer on the real world environment with the ability to scale out, have multiple F5s, all active, active, tracking all the traffic, making sure that I'm doing this in a redundant fashion, keeping track of, uh, you know, of instances or VMs that are up and running and when they're down so we can, you know, we can adjust the traffic flow as needed. Doing it without Aviatrix to me seems impossible. Yeah, you'd be out of your mind to try to deploy this and let alone manage and operate it after the fact on your own without any type of platform handling it for you. I just don't, I can't imagine anybody trying to do this on their own. It wouldn't make sense. It's not logical. Completely agree. Okay, now let me show you how easy it is to configure this using the Aviatrix controller. So we start out with just the standard transit fire net workflow. We're going to come down here, enable transit gateway for transit fire net functions. Now, I did already create the gateways. The gateways are going to be uh, built, but I'm sure, Dana, you've probably got a couple other videos out there showing how yep. the, the gateways are deployed. But once that the gateway is deployed, you're going to pick the gateway that you want, enable this workflow. I've already done that. At that point, you're going to go ahead and manage your fire net policy, and you're going to pick, like I mentioned earlier, which VPCs you want to inspect. So when I had that diagram up and said I was coming up to the dev side, as mm -hmm. soon as I start inspecting this dev side, you'll see that traffic is going through the firewall network, which in this case is the F5 and the service chain. Next step, of course, is go to the firewall network and deploy the actual firewall. So I jump down to deploying the firewall, which is down here in the step seven. We have a couple options. Typically, if you've both watched other videos or looked at doing firewall network, you'd come in here and you'd launch a firewall mm -hmm. from our controller but F5 isn't deployable from our controller, at least not today. So we go down to our another option, which is 7B, it's associated an existing firewall instance. And if you notice right here, it shows Big IP Ohio Transit. So you simply go in, it uses your uh, information from your account. In this case, it was an AWS, but it could be an Azure. It looks at the interfaces. I tie those interfaces, whether they're LAN or management or egress, I give it a name and then you associate. Once that happens, the Aviatrix controller connects the gateway to that F5 as if it were you know, any of the other firewalls directly, not knowing that it's also doing a service chain behind that because as our architecture allows, we're redirecting that traffic to this F5. That F5 can do what it needs to and then sends it right back into our architecture. Got it, got it. So you're kind of slipstreaming an F5 into the, into the Aviatrix FireNet workflow as if it was a firewall. The Aviatrix controller is agnostic as to what you're inserting there as a service. That's the beauty of it. It exactly. This step 7B here is really the beauty of it. If I have anything that I can receive packets, inspect them and send it back, I can attach it at this point and we're going to allow that device to be included into our architecture at that point. Yeah, that's amazing. So as we see traffic from A to B and we're told no, that has to now go through uh, you know, this device, whether it be a firewall or whatever it may be, hmm. we are going to take that management and control and handle sending that traffic through and then can allow it to continue on its way. I want to really drive home the point around how flexible this makes your network in the cloud, 
having this AVHS controller architecture that allows you to insert pretty much any type of NFV you can imagine into your path of traffic is really an unbelievable architecture. It allows for true and complete agility for your business operations. You don't have to worry about any type of third party protocols or any specific requirements for the surface insertion. Just leverage the controller's intelligence to insert the NFV into the line of traffic. Really, really powerful. And then once this is deployed using this setup, we can go into the advanced tab here where we see the firewalls deployed and you can see I actually have quite a few firewalls set up. And uh, right here, whether it being the Ohio egress, which I mentioned before, which is how we're getting out with FireNet, I also have the F5 transit. If I look at this right here, we're gonna get all the details of this transit gateway. We're seeing the ciders, the, you know, where everything is going and where the direction is, um, you know, for this setup. So if we, we look at the all zeros, you know, we see where we can go, mm -hmm. whether we're trying to go to, uh, you know, the other firewall in case of uh, failover, or if we're going out toward the internet. Again, this just reiterates the point that from the Aviatrix controller and from the Aviatrix architecture, this F5 is just another firewall in our FireNet design. So you get all the benefits and all the visibility as you would with any other firewall insertion that Aviatrix does. So that's, that's really amazing. Okay, let me show you then on the F5 setup, you know, because to the F5, um, this is a, a really great feature where it's doing this SSL orchestration. And you can see here, like I said earlier, um, with this laptop that I'm using that we've been showing through this uh, demo so far, has been using uh, this solution going through the going through the F5. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing here in this red side, decryption status, this red part is the decrypted traffic. So obviously, like I talked about earlier, most of the traffic on the internet is decrypted. We get these statistics. We um, you know can adjust what is going to be decrypted, what is not going to be decrypted. Mm -hmm. It's a real easy setup, right? I go to the configure. We pick the client side, the server you're going through, uh, in my case, it's Palo Alto, walk through this easy wizard that builds it out, and you basically go through here and can decide what traffic do I want to send. So I'm, in my case, sending all traffic to the firewall, yeah. and I'm saying I want to intercept it for SSL, so it actually decrypts it, and then I want to send it to that firewall. But I could go in here and uh, you know pick and choose some traffic I don't want to decrypt, some traffic I do want to decrypt, and so on. Mm -hmm. And that's really basically the you know the entire setup of this SSL orchestration from this point of view is from this configuration and from this wizard that walks you through there. Got it. I can look at this if I go up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a uh, a new tab because I prefer. Uh, with caching, when I'm changing things back and forth with caching, it, it, it can have some issues. So if I go over here and I do a new private window so mm -hmm. that I don't have any history to worry about or anything like that, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go somewhere um, right now, let's say I wanted to go to, you know, Chewy.com. Most people have pets, so, you know, people go here all the time. Mm -hmm. We look at this, and like every other site, it is encrypted. If I click on this lock, connection is secure. I look at it, and it's securely connected by DigiCert. Yeah. So in this case, if we remember... And if we go back to my Aviatrix controller, when I looked at my firewall network setup, mm -hmm. I had nothing being inspected. Mm -hmm. So at this point, going back to this picture, maybe where I'll show you the, the easier one to look at, I'm coming through and I'm going directly to the internet. Got it. So I'm leaving my laptop, going through, I'm still going through our transit connection, but I'm not redirecting that traffic to the F5 and I'm going on my way. And once I go on my way like that, I'm able to see that my encrypted connection is, is secure yep. and it's going all the way through by DigiCert. Now, let's say instead, I want to actually enable that decryption side. So I'm going to redirect that traffic by simply going to the dev spoke, which is again, where I was. Mm -hmm. That's been added now. So that dev spoke has been added to the inspection. So if we go back to this picture, I'm in the dev for, yep. all, for all intents and purposes. So this traffic is going to be redirected. I'll go back here, and just to be safe, I'm going to uh, open up a new private window. Again, I don't like any caching when you're doing things with web pages. Mm -hmm. And I will go to Chewy.com again, exact same site. I'm going to come through here. Looks exactly the same to me. But now if I go up here and click on this lock, it is still secure. When I look at it, it's verified by Filman, oh, no. which is the name of my certificate authority that I have installed yeah. on the F5. Yeah, yeah. So what this does for people that use this solution, we are, like I said, we have a lot of customers that use this, is in this environment, in this model, the traffic is actually, my SSL connection is being terminated by this F5 with my own certificate authority. Now to make this work, I actually had to install that certificate on my laptop, in my browser, 
so that it would be accepted. And that's typically done by companies. You know, they'll push those out their own trusted certificates yeah, that yeah. their Traditional employees method. would be able to use. Yep, exactly. So that's that's a very common practice. Uh, and then the F5 goes out the rest of the way and does the encrypted connection to the uh, to the end result, which in this case happens to be chewy because maybe I'm going to buy some dog food. Mm-hmm. Now, if I continue this, and this part I think is really nice, if I go to my Palo Alto and I actually want to traffic, you know, capture this traffic, so I'm going to go through here and I will start a packet capture. When I have a filter on, which is just my source address, so that we don't get a lot of information. So I turn this packet capture on, say OK. Now I go back into my Chewy site. This connection is still up, going through there. Let's say I'm going to, I'm not going to look far. I'm going to buy some American Journey dog food. Here I'm going to go ahead and look at this. I'm going to add this to my cart, mm-hmm. right? This is an encrypted connection. Now I look at this, add it to my cart. Great. Let me jump back over to my Palo Alto. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop my packet capture. I will wait for my packet capture to show up, which it is. Now I'm going to open this. Now remember, this is an encrypted connection. I showed you it was encrypted. I'm now going to open this with Wireshark. Once this comes up, I'm going to look for uh, anywhere HTTP contains American. And if I look through here, I should be able to find the brand of this dog food that I basically just put in there, right? American Journey, uh, whatever it may be. Here's Mm shoppingchewy.com. And uh, here it is right there. American, American journey. journey, peanut butter recipe, you know, so it actually is reading that traffic. So it's it's not encrypted. I can see what's going on. Yeah. But yet when I go back and look at my setup from my browser, that is a, a secure connection. Wow. So what we're really showing here is to the open Internet side, that traffic is still encrypted and still protected. But for my case, where I'm trying to actually protect my assets and make sure I know what's going on in my environment, and with the power of the Aviatrix FireNet deployment, I'm able to let this traffic continue on its way after it's been opened and allow full access to it in the firewall. I mean, think about having your firewall and your IPS actually be able to see what's going on in your environment. Yeah, yeah, powerful. I, I mean, the F5 solution is cool. Don't get me wrong. This SSL decryption and the fact that it will send it to the firewall and everything, this, that's amazing. But to me, what's mind-blowing is that I can deploy this whole architecture, this enterprise-level architecture, in minutes. That, that, that's just mind-blowing. To have to do this by hand, it takes days. And so, I, and then you can repeat this over multiple clouds, and then you can use Terraform automation to deploy this with scripting, to have it variables and make it really, really... Uh, expandable and make it more flexible. So this is just mind blowing. I love having these conversations with my colleagues like you, Phil, because you guys are getting some incredible things done for our customers using the Aviatrix platform and the power and the intelligence that's built in. Exactly. I, I couldn't agree more, Dana. This and I, and I appreciate that. But th- this is this is a great opportunity to show the power of what Aviatrix can do. And, and like I showed you earlier, right, just by simply going in and doing the simple change, adding and removing inspection of that spoke, I'm able to control the flow of traffic in and out of whatever my environment needs to be for my customer's requirement. Phil, thank you so much for being here and spending time showing me this architecture and the solution you came up with for the F5 and AVHX integration. My mind is honestly blown. Every time I talk to you guys, I get more and more excited about this stuff. And I think the audience is as well. I really want to thank you so much. You know, Dana, it was my pleasure. I, I love doing this. This is this is my passion. It was really fun to set this up and work with a customer and go through, you know, solving their requirements and helping them see how easy it is to deploy and scale, you know, for their environment and to meet all their business requirements. Perfect. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Dana. As always, I'd like to end this episode with the what did Aviatrix do for you discussion. In this scenario, Phil leveraged the transit fire net workflow to insert more than just next generation firewalls. Customers have been leveraging the transit fire net workflow successfully to insert more than just next generation firewalls. And in this case, it was an F5 SSL decryption solution. But imagine all the other solutions you could insert into the path of traffic dynamically. And then on top of that, chain additional services such as Palo Alto firewalls in the same VPC or VNet. The Aviatrix controller was handling the high availability. It was spinning up multiple gateways, spinning up multiple firewalls, connecting them all together, 
handling the load balancing and the hashing and the monitoring of these devices to ensure that, that they were up and passing traffic to avoid black holing traffic. And since the AVHX transit architecture was being leveraged, we could also enable day two monitoring through the controller. Things like packet capture, trace path, ping, trace route, and flow visibility and analytics. Lastly, this whole thing we just did could be replicated in any region, in any cloud, seamlessly using Terraform automation. I wanna thank you for being here with me for another episode. We'll see you in the next one.